there. Thank you so much for joining us today for our panel discussion. I am blessed to have Linda Baker, Kathy Cronin, and Susan Jarbo on our panel today. Before we get into our topic, though, let's just take a moment and start with prayer. So I'd like to invite you to sit back, get comfortable, take a breath, close your eyes if that's comfortable for you, take another breath, and turn within. Divine Spirit, beloved God, we rejoice in this opportunity to be together, to share and grow with one another. God, we would ask that our words reach the right people and are heard in the right heart, and that your message, your spirit, be a part of each and every one of us as we express into this time of sharing and communing. Thank you, God. Amen. So I am reading a book by Lowell Fillmore. Uh, Lowell Fillmore is my personal favorite of the Fillmore kids. He is the son of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who, as we know, are the co-founders of the Unity Movement, the Unity Church. And this is a book published by Lowell Fillmore. It's called New Ways to Solve Old Problems, and it was written in 1945. So they aren't the newest ways, maybe, to solve old problems, but I love the way he writes, and I hope you'll enjoy this. This is called Setting Yourself Free, and I'm just going to read a little bit of it, and hopefully we'll have a great discussion. Forgiveness is essential to the attainment of spiritual growth. Forgiveness must include everything and everybody, which of course means forgiving oneself. You may have made mistakes and others may have made mistakes, but you must forgive them all if you would rise above the realm of mistakes. Forgive yourself and sin no more. God forgives you when you forgive yourself. Forgive 70 times, seven times, if need be. Forgiving is a freeing process. When you forgive anybody, you are setting your own soul free from bondage and condemnation. When you forgive, oh, I just read that. Condemnation binds and limits those who condemn by their thoughts or words. It is a heavy burden, which the race is bearing because of ignorance. Forgiveness sets you free. Forgiveness opens the way for better things to come to you. Do not carry the mental load of your past sins about with you. Forgive yourself. Ask God to forgive you. And let your burdens roll away. Let the past go and begin again with God's help. Do what is right today. Make reparation for the past as much as you can. But stop worrying about the past. And stop condemning yourself for past mistakes. Begin to praise and give thanks. Do your best. Praise the power of God in you. Know that God is helping you to do better. Now, as is Mr. Fillmore's habit, he has recommendations for daily meditations as you are working on setting yourself free. The first one is, I willingly forgive all who have wronged me. And then for the next day, there is no condemnation in me for anyone. I love everybody. And then the next one is I forgive myself, followed by the forgiving love of Jesus Christ has set me free from the bondage of condemnation. 
Thursday, the spirit of love sets me free from the bondage of hate and fear. Friday, by forgiving everybody, I open the way for God's love to enter my heart. Saturday, I hold no malice towards anyone. Divine love fills my soul with its healing power. I just love his writings and I love his style. Of course, in unity, we know that sin is error thinking, mistaken beliefs, things that we do from a set of beliefs that aren't centered in the capital T truth. One of the reasons I like this reading so much is the steps he lays out are very much close to the 12 steps that I love and follow. And one other thing I want to say before my wonderful panel shares is remember if you're carrying some kind of resentment or unforgiveness towards yourself, that you always make the very best decision that you know how to make. And if you've made decisions you wish you had enough that have caused actions you wish hadn't happened, really stop and think about who you were when you made that decision and what the decisions were that you had to choose from. Truth is, you're older and wiser now, and your life has changed. So much so that you would never make that decision. So in reality, you aren't even that person anymore. So you're holding a resentment against a creation that no longer exists. It's evolved to be something more. It's turned into who you are today. So there's my thoughts on forgiveness. I'm going to open this to my amazing panel. Ladies, who's next? If I got it here? Okay. Well, um, I think it's pretty easy to forgive myself. I mean, I know I'm a good person and I accept good as a gift in my life. And I walk in the focus of being good. So I think I, think I can truly forgive myself. What I have a problem with is forgiving somebody else. I mean, I can take I can take a loss and I can um, forgive them for things that they do against me, but all at the same time, there is an energy in me that says, stand up for yourself. If you say you forgive them, then you're allowing them to get away with something that they did to you that they may turn around and do to somebody else. So I love exactly what you're talking about. And I wish I had it as a, as a tall glass full that I could just drink it down and totally have it quench me internally thank you linda that's beautiful and how wonderful you're able to forgive yourself and you're so at peace that's that's just a wonderful place to be i wanted to comment on your comment there's a saying in 12 steps that holding a resentment against somebody is like drinking poison and hoping they'll die um, and when I think on forgiving someone, what I'm really doing, and, and Mr. Fillmore Lowell covered that in the reading too, is I'm freeing me. I'm letting me out of the bonds that you put me in. If you do something against me and I'm thinking about that all the time and I even let it change me now, I'm not going to the church you go to anymore because you're there, or I'm not going to do this because, you know, this happens, then I'm really hurting myself. When I forgive you, I'm really freeing me from 
any effect your actions had on me. I can't control who you are or what you do. I can love you and bless you and pray that you come to a place where you're at peace with you. But for me to find that peace, I need to forgive you. So just kind of my thoughts. I'll let the rest of you share. Sorry. So I, I'll go next. Um, and I find it interesting that about solving old problems really stems around forgiveness. You know, that when we're carrying old problems with us, it's because we haven't released them and we haven't released them because we haven't forgiven the players in the in the situation. So I want to hang on to this along the way. And I always remember something I heard some time ago is that um, if you're not forgiving them, you're holding them hostage on something that happened in a time and a moment that's not currently present. And it's like you keep hanging on to that, holding that person hostage for their mistake or their thing by not forgiving it. Um, however, in the aspect of looking at that is that I can forgive you. I may not forget what you've done, but I can forgive what you did at this point in time. Um, I also feel that my biggest area is working on forgiving myself. Opposite of Linda Baker is that I am my worst critic and things have, um, and sometimes what happens when I'm working more on doing my soul work and pulling in, you know, this thing, I start getting flashbacks of times that I was not in my best behavior or actions or coming and I, I get to, you know, it's like they say your life flashes in front of you in those last few moments. Well, I get these situations flashing, these memories flashing about behaviors that I did at that point in time. And where I have to sit and forgive myself is I behaved that way because that was what I knew at that point in time in my life. And I've grown beyond that now, and I have to forgive, you know, that immaturity or that timing in my life is not present now. And to go forward is recognizing my growth. And I just feel it it haunts me to all of a sudden, sometimes um, contemplative prayer was something when I would get into doing that. I just start getting all these flashbacks of things in my life that was like not my finest moments <laughs> and I didn't want to see them again, but it gave me that chance to do that forgiveness work. And I think as I slowly worked through those times that I just did not behave as or let my true Christ light shine, that if I can forgive myself, for that behavior at that time, I'm going to grow into being the spirit and the light that I am today and continue to let that shine for. So I think the more we hold on resentments and things where we're unforgiving, we're snuffing out our light. And I just feel that when I'm more open to that, my light shines brighter. So that's my thoughts on this. Like Kathy. I have more of a problem forgiving myself than forgiving other people. Although I'm not saying I have forgiven everyone, at least not yet. What surprised me was when you said that God forgives us after we have forgiven ourselves. Now, that's a really powerful statement, at least to me because I always figured it was the other way around. When God forgives me, then it's okay, I'm okay, and I can forgive myself now and go on with my life. But what you have said puts all that backwards, and I'm going to need to think about that some more. Um, one of the things that uh, came up in mind when you talk about forgiveness, is some of the reasons why it's hard to forgive. 
And uh, one reason why it can be hard to forgive is if the behavior occurs over and over again, rather than if it's just a one shot deal. You know, and that's, you know, the old saying, uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. You know, um, on the other hand, the flip side of that is Jesus says, forgive 70 times seven. So I don't know what to do with that one. I strive for forgiveness. But um, like I say, when it's chronic, it's harder. When it's just one time, it's okay. Another thing that makes it hard to forgive, harder to forgive, is when the consequences are severe or long-lasting. You could have a couple where one partner is, let's say, unfaithful. That's one thing. And if it happens one time and that's the only time, you know, the couple can probably get past it. Um, on the other hand, if the partner comes home with a sexually transmitted disease, that's a long-term consequence. And it might make it harder to forgive. And um, a couple of other comments that I had. Um, you also have to give up the quest for justice. You have to put revenge out of your mind. You, you know, and, and there's part of it. Sometimes we just want them to suffer the way we have or something like that. And you have to get rid of that. Another thing I thought was, um, have they apologized and made a sincere apology? I'm not saying they have to have done that for you to forgive them. I'm simply saying it's one of the factors that goes into forgiving other people. And finally, there are people who say, oh, yes, I forgive you. And then they keep bringing it up. Have you ever known anyone like that who says, oh, yes, you, yeah, I forgive you. But then remember the time you did this? And six months later, remember the time you did that? Uh, I have a sister-in-law now deceased who was the most forgiving person and when she forgave you, it was over. It's like it never happened. And that's that's the way I would like to become. Okay, I'm commenting on all of that. I loved your your share. I loved this topic, and I will let everybody have a chance to to talk some more. Um, the first comment you made was about God forgiving after you forgive yourself. And and the way I interpret that, and that was from Lowell Fillmore. He's the one that, that said that. I just read it. But I know I would not accept, okay, God's forgiveness, God's grace until I learned to forgive myself. So it was always there. But really allowing that, I would block it with the resentment or the anger that I was holding on to. It wasn't until I was able to forgive myself or at the very least become willing to forgive myself, which is a part of the process for me, that I was able to really accept and allow I, God's forgiveness and, and God's grace. The next one you brought up that I'm going to comment on is repeat offenders. And heck, yeah, I know this one so well, but at some point, I, like you said, shame on me, right? What in me is expecting that person to do something that apparently they can't do? They continually show me who they are who am I to say, no, you have to change to meet my expectations. At some point, I need to accept you are who you are and you are where you are on the path and our paths are no longer one, right? I, I bless you on your way. I pray you get all you need in the world, but you're just not on my path anymore. And, and that becomes a lesson for me. 
And the next one you said is when people say they forgive you and then keep bringing that up. 12 steps again, right? For me, it's when I make amends. If I say, hey, I did this and I'm really sorry, that's one thing. But if I say, okay, this is what I've done. I am sorry. Tell me how I can make it better. Tell me what I can do to undo or make better what I've done wrong. And you can say, oh, nothing. Your thanks is, you know, your your apology is all I need. Or you can say, never talk to me again. Or you can say, you know, buy me a new car. But when I feel like I've done my best to make amends, I really no longer care if you forgive me or not. That's your process. I'm done. I have done everything that I can do that I'm willing to do to set right my mistake. I've made a heartfelt apology. I've done my best to make amends. I no longer give you permission to punish me with my mistakes. Okay, we're done. And and I've got an example from the 12 steps again. I was doing something with my youngest son and he's about 15 years younger than my daughter. And my daughter said, I wish you were my mom because I was really a horrible mom to her when I was in my addiction. That was legit. But I'd made my amends, right? So I turned to her and I said, and I meant it, I am. This is who I am today. And I am your mother the best I can be the way I always have been. My best is just better now. And for me, that's me making amends. So I've talked a lot on this subject. I'm going to let all of you have a chance to share again. Any other comments? How about when you're dealing with the business world on forgiveness? You have a contractor that comes along and doesn't do what they're supposed to do. And you go get another contractor. And <clears throat> it seems like sometimes you walk into the same situation, like you're trying to learn the same lesson over again. But it's not on a personal level. It's on a business level. Is the outlook on that? still the same? Does anybody else want to come in on that? Kathy? I'll, I'll come in on that. Because um, when you are do dealing with businesses and contracts and the, you know, the legality of it is, you know, it's just basically is if they're not fulfilling their side of the contract to your satisfaction, then your recourse is to let them go and move on. You know, it's like, why continue to beat a dead horse? They're not meeting your needs, but you need to be very clear what you feel you expect from them. You know, in a relationship with a spouse or a child, it's harder to put your expectation. But when you're dealing with a contract is just holding their feet to the fire. And that's really where I feel is that in that type of thing, it's just sort of saying you did not let that do. Now, sometimes that's what for me, what comes out of that is I have to forgive myself for being suckered into something, um, you know, because the thing is that I either didn't set the boundary and make it clear. I didn't make it clear to them what I expected of them or I let them take advantage of me. And so then that forgiveness has to come on myself about how I, in a sense, became a victim in this. But the biggest thing when you're dealing with business is cut, cut your losses and move on. You know, it's sort of like established where, you know, and that's why we have so much litigation going on. The courts are out there. If you've been wronged, you can write it. You, you know, it's sort of is that type of thing, but. You know, but some of it is maybe stepping back and saying to yourself, I have to forgive myself 
for not either having the knowledge or what you know being the victim in this and 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 get yourself out of the victim state um and that's my thought on that so thank you kathy um good good insight good information i know i personally have told the company or corporation that this is my complaint this is where i feel they've dropped the ball or they've misrepresented themselves and these are the places that i will be expressing these views in my reviews um and and you know we've got more power by using google reviews or or yelp or or any one of those things our voice matters and Yelp is especially um, effective is the word I want because nobody but you can take that down. So when you put a review about this person on Yelp, that person or corporation stays there until or unless you take it down. They cannot remove it. The thing to do is don't be angry when you write it be very factual, come from a place of your highest and best self, knowing that you want people to be aware of how they represented themselves and what they actually provided or did for you. It's very powerful. That's not about revenge and that's not about resentment. In this day and age, it's an informational age. This is you reporting the facts as they happen to you. So often companies have been able to perpetrate all kinds of fraudulent claims because we're victims. We go to the Better Business Bureau and tell them, and then somebody might go to the Better Business Bureau and ask and find out. But now it's everywhere, all over the place. If I look up a business or a person on, on Google, I'm going to get Yelp right away and it's going to show me the reviews. And that's a powerful, responsible tool as long as I am not writing from anger, I am not sl slandering or misrepresenting the facts. Forgiving doesn't mean that we aren't going to make it right, what you've done to me. Forgiving isn't the same as saying, yeah, that's okay, do it again. Forgiving is about releasing what happened to the past so that I can be my highest and best self going forward. Okay. Boy, that was a fun topic. Any other comments before we close? Just, just a quick one. When it's someone, when we're talking about someone on the interpersonal level uh, that we need to forgive, part of what you're doing is you're you're thinking about the relationship as a whole. You know, part of it is, do I want to sustain this relationship? Is this relationship important to me? Whereas that really isn't a factor in business when you're when you're dealing with uh business people i mean you as you said you, know, you want to be civilized and polite you know the normal norms of social interaction but it isn't you know like you're building a relationship or creating a permanent interpersonal relationship thank you linda just one final note. <laughs> Living in West Virginia, I had an experience with a contractor that didn't finish the job he was supposed to. And his response to me was, <clears throat> this is what you get. If you try to come back on me, I will burn your house down. So it became a matter of courage or forgiveness, and I chose forgiveness.
Well, and I would have reported that legally. Um, and yeah, that's that's quite a quite a different thing. That's a safety issue. Uh, and hopefully that doesn't happen too often. Other comments? Kathy, were you going to say something? I, I was going to, I agree with you on Riverland and something like that. That has to be reported. That kind of, that's a threat. That's a personal threat. And just doing forgiveness is letting this person to continue to victimize people. Um, and that's where it becomes. So one of the things I will share with you on that is that by you just saying, I chose forgiveness and, and because out of that fear and intimidation, mm -hmm. um, you still allowed yourself to be a victim to his fraudulent behavior. And so one of the things to look at is in future dealings is never allowing yourself to do that again because you will say, I will stand up for my rights in this thing. So instead of going, oh, this is about forgiving them, this is not about forgiveness in that mm -hmm. situation. That is just totally unethical behaviors and needs to be held accountable for it. So sometimes it's a fine line. It really is. And in the professional world, when I was in counseling, one of the measurements that we use to see where are you on that line, you know, are you over, are you under, is, is there potential for harm to be ongoing? And if somebody mm -hmm. made a threat against you and that worked, how likely is that person to use the same skill on somebody else? So that's, you know, kind of a, a stick we use to help us measure what needs to be reported and what doesn't. And if other people are likely to be victimized in the same way, then by reporting, you're actually not only protecting yourself and your own home, but the homes of other people he may have done this to. And we've seen when we open lawsuits like this, there's a me too factor that comes in. And then all of a sudden, all these other people who were afraid to come forward are empowered to share on that too. And, and that's a part of the process of being able to forgive. I've done my part. Now I can let it go. Okay, well, that was a fun topic. I am going to bring us to a close. I would like to thank you for viewing this video and remind you, if we said anything here that you believe is going to be helpful to another person, please feel free to share our videos. We are happy to reach whomever you think would be blessed by the work that we present here. We want to welcome our new subscribers. We are so glad to have you with us. And if you are not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us and we'll be able to stay in touch. So it could help you too. Thank you for being with us. God bless. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.